Hello, I hope everyone is still keeping their sanity during this time. I'm sorry for this video to take a while, but I was busy and lazy too. Recently I caught a cold, feel okay now, but my voice sounds terrible. Anyways, I have been enjoying using this PC a lot, but this time we say goodbye to the water cooler and test two best low profile coolers that I currently have the Gryrig C7 Graphene and the Alpenform Black Ridge. Before I can swap the CPU cooler, I will need to undo all the cables to remove the H60 water cooler. It wasn't that bad, took me around 10 minutes to get the motherboard and the cooler out of the case. So, first cooler is the Gryrig C7 Graphene with a Noctua NFA9 x 14 fan. This setup is pretty similar to the last one, two extra drives and one 120mm fan to help exhaust the GPU hot air. Quick recap, the CPU is undervolted at 4GHz with 1.22V, 32GB of Corsair LPX3200MHz CL16, the RTX 2070 is also undervolted with MSI Afterburner at 1965MHz with 925mV. Here the system at idle, average temperature for the CPU is 55 degrees and max at 62 degrees. For the GPU, average temperature is 49 and max at 50. With IDA64 running for 30 minutes straight, thing got really toasty. Average CPU temperature was sitting at 95 degrees Celsius and peaked at 97. The graphic card stay pretty much the same around 50 degrees. Next is the Black Ridge cooler. Total height for this cooler is 47mm just like the C7, but it has 6 heat pipes while the C7 only has 4. I also replaced the stock fan of the cooler with a Noctua fan and used it as intake because it has been proven to provide better temperature. Aesthetically, the cooler looks pretty beautiful in my opinion. To use the cooler on the ASUS B450i or X470i, the M.2 heatsink needs to be removed. I replaced it with a copper M.2 heatsink to keep my NVMe drive cool. You can see the cooler covers most of the motherboard surface and there was no room for my 2.5 inch SSD so I had to mount it behind the graphic card. If you prefer a cheaper alternative, you can check out the IS47K from ID Cooling. After putting the cooler on the board, I ran IDA64 for 17 minutes and temperature was, as you can see, hot. 96 97 degrees Celsius. Stopping it brought the CPU back to 55 degrees, which was in line with the Gryrix C7. I did not continue testing because there was a problem. The motherboard was slightly bent. People reported that using a Noctua NMAM4 L9 backplate would help the issue while also improve the temperature. I own a Noctua L9i cooler, so I requested the AM4 mounting for free a long time ago. This can also be purchased on Amazon for pretty cheap. With the back plate is now installed, you can see how much force was applied as the plate was also bent. Without it, I would not feel comfortable putting it on my naked motherboard. The force was so strong that my CPU and the cooler were stuck together, so when I pulled the Black Ridge cooler to install the Noctua blade, I also pulled my CPU out of the motherboard socket. Luckily, there was no damage. With IDA64 ran for another half an hour, CPU temperature was at 94 to 95 degrees C. I felt there was no improvement compared to the Gryrix C7. I flipped the case so that the CPU chamber would be on top with the hope that hot air would rise and exhaust through the top vent, but nope, no change. Here's just my guess. The problem is not from the coolers, we can use the best cooler 
but if the case can exhaust the heat fast enough, eventually, temperature will continue rising because the hot air is trapped. That may be a reason we see similar temperatures for both coolers. I don't know. You guys let me know. The most intensive task I would normally do is video rendering. I render the first 5 minutes of this video at 8K 60fps. Target bitrate was 120 megabit per second just for the meme. I ran for 1 hour and average temperature was 82 degrees and max out at 92 degrees. Not bad. I'm currently having so much fun with Red Dead Redemption 2 and you can see at the top left corner, temperatures for both CPU and GPU are very good. For air cooling in this case, whether you go with the Cryrix C7 or the Black Ridge cooler, keeping the temperature in a good range would require some modifications in the BIOS. After that, gaming or video rendering would not be a problem. Also, for someone who claimed placing the SSD behind a graphic card would fry the drive, sorry, that was wrong. Mister, don't know how many times I tried to leave that crazy bastard, but he always came after me. I'm glad he's dead. Uh, sure. Serves me right taking the first man shines up on me. God damn hillbillies. You may or may not notice that I increased the voltage of the CPU from 1.17V to 1.22V because I used the ECC VOP memory and they kept throwing me blue screen. Thanks to them, I realized that my voltage was not enough to keep the system stable. In the next video, I would combine the Black Ridge cooler with this VLP RAM and a slim Noctua 120mm fan to see how good they can be. So stay tuned! That's the end of my video. If you are interested in getting the parts, I already had the links in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.